going to talk about uh, Anne's little Yamaha G1 with piano disc that's going to Dallas. I also thought I'd take the opportunity to compare a G1 versus a Yamaha C1. Uh, years ago, Yamaha used to produce two lines of pianos. They used to produce the Yamaha G series and the C series. So they used to have a G1, G2, G3, G5, and that was it for the G series because the G series was mostly a piano that, that was designed for use at home, not for a commercial environment. Commercial environment, meaning maybe like a recording studio where the piano is being used every day, or a piano in the studio of a university where it's being pounded on every day, rock modern off. It's going to hold better tune because the C series is more, it had a heavier plate, it was built heavier duty basically, and uh, but all the parts are pretty much are the same between the two pianos. What happened was that sometime in the early to mid 1990s, Yamaha. Uh, decided to only have one line of piano, so they converted everything to the C-series, okay? And uh, really the reason why is because there was just a declining demand for pianos in general. Years ago, a lot of families, when they have kids, the first thing they do is get a piano. These days it's an Xbox, you know? It's just our culture, it's what it is. But uh, Yamaha decided to have only the C-series. So what they did in, when they made the transition is that they just took the Yamaha G1 and they redesigned it a little bit and they called it the C1. Same thing with the G1 to the uh, C, G1 to the C1, G2 to the C2. Uh, what they did also was that they kept those two models but they dropped the G3, they dropped the G5. So now you have C1, C2, C3, C5, C6, and C7. So over here we're gonna talk about basically the Yamaha G1 versus the C1 and how you can tell the difference. So on my left, or your right, is going to be the C1. Oh, I pulled the music desk out. Incidentally, notice how I pulled the music desk out. This is very important because if you do it incorrectly, you're gonna scratch the foreboard. When you pull the music desk out of the piano, incidentally, this is called the music desk, you close the foreboard, you put one hand on either side, you can give it a little push this way, you take this, which is the uh, support for the music stand, you let it down, you put a hand on each side, you take it out. And you put it somewhere safe. Okay? Now you open it back up, and now you can see basically the inside of the piano. So, on C1... nice sound. Uh, they did do some improvements from the G1 to the C1, and basically if you will do the same thing to this. Let's let's tell you, let's use Ann's piano here for a second. Remember? Fold the full board down, release the prop, put the music stand, put it somewhere safe. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to notice is that in the G1 you have one, two, three, for braces in the plate. The plate is very important that it's stiff and heavy duty because that's what maintains the tuning for the strings. So the harder that you play or the more that you play, um, the more the piano is going to go out of tune. But if this is heavy duty or heavier duty, it's going to maintain the tuning. So if you look over here at the C1, okay, you'll see there's an extra brace in here. Not only is there an extra brace, but these braces here are reinforced with a little more iron. Remember, these are made of iron, and this is basically 75% of the piano's weight is in the plate. And if you look at also, there's a little difference in color. Um, they went from a gold to like a copper tone in the mid-1990s. Uh, this particular piano is a 2005, 2006. Um, you're also gonna notice that it has a deeper tone. I'm gonna play a little bit on this piano. Now 
to do the same thing on the G one. Now, one thing that you really have to understand it is almost impossible to ascertain the tone of a piano off a cell phone video or a YouTube video. You really can't. You have to, you really have to see them in person and hear them in person. However, I can tell you between the two pianos, C1 has a little bit deeper tone to it because there's some different things that they did to it. Uh, they changed some woods and this and that. I don't know. I'm not a piano builder, but I can tell you that I know these instruments very well. I've been around them for the last 30 years. And uh, both pianos, I can tell you that the G1, one of the best baby grands in the world that you could buy today. And the C1 is just that much better. And the reason why I say that is really because there's not that many people making or manufacturers making pianos anymore. And if you look at like the uh, very high-end pianos that are hand-built like in Germany and Italy, like Fazioli and Bosendorfer, they don't make five-foot baby grands. Yamaha is the only company that makes high-end baby grands and you'll find that in both the G1 and the C1 the C1 being the preferred model. But anyway, this particular C1 uh, is going to Ann in Dallas, and uh, this piano has a piano disc system, which I'm going to demonstrate and give you a little tutorial on how to work it, because every time I send out a piano disc system to somebody, I always get a call, and the call is, I don't know, it's not working right, I don't know, the, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, the volume, this and that. I said, did you watch my video that tells you how to work it? Oh no. I said, well, why don't you try giving that a shot first before you call me and say that and panic that it's not working right. Because there is a, a, a proper way to work it and an improper way to work it. One more thing about Yamaha C1 or even the G1, if you're looking for a baby grand piano because you just don't have the room, these pianos are very hard to find, especially the C1s. And the reason why is that you have to remember that Yamaha has been building G1s since like the 1960s. I got one over here. I think that's like a 1970 or something that we refinished. It's a real nice piano as far as a baby grand is concerned. And uh, so they've been building the, the G1 from early 1970s till mid 1990s. And they only just started building C1s from the mid 1990s till now. So that's why you just don't have that many that come available. And uh, most people that have the smaller pianos usually keep them longer because when they if they're coming out of a big home and want to downsize, they can take their piano with them. But if they have a C3 or a C5 or even a C7, generally if they're downsizing after the kids leave the home, they're going to have to uh, sell the piano because they're going to a smaller place. Anyway, so the one thing that I want to uh, now move along to is when uh, Anne gets her piano, what she does with it, okay? So first of all, when you look over here, this is how the piano arrives to your house. Okay, so the movers are gonna unpack the piano. They're going to put the legs on it. The legs come in these boxes here. Okay, so the legs and the pedals. So they're gonna unwrap it. They're gonna put the legs on the piano. They're gonna put the pedals on the piano. And then they're gonna set it up to where it looks like this. Like Anne's piano is right now. All closed up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you really how to open up the piano. Uh, the proper way without uh, damaging it or hurting yourself, okay? Because remember that, especially this part here, this lid, this is pretty heavy, and you don't want it to fall down, you don't want it to hit you or whatever, and, uh, and so I'm going to show you the proper way after the mover sets up your piano. He's probably going to do this for you, but you should also know. When you uh, open up the lid, remember this is the lid of the piano, you have the front part and the back part. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up the front part, like this, okay? Notice where I'm standing. I'm not standing in front of the piano, I'm standing over here to the side. Because the side is where you have the best leverage to lift up the lid, because trust me, this is very heavy, especially when it gets to be seven and a half feet, okay? Then you take the prop stick. This is called the prop stick. The prop stick is always in the cup that makes a 90 degree angle with the lid. See this 90 degree angle? You wouldn't believe how many movies I see where whoever set up the, the set in the movie has the piano open like this. 
which is totally wrong, and it's going to break the, the, the hinge. You wouldn't believe how many movies and pictures and magazines or whatever always remember to fold back the top board. Incidentally, parts on the, on the uh, piano. Uh, this is called the lock bar. The reason why it's called the lock bar is because it incorporates a lock. Okay, see so the key, the lock. Okay. Just another small note on a small note. Um, only Yamaha's pianos that are made in Hamamatsu, Japan, have a lock bar with a lock in it. Okay. So when you see these uh, Yamaha baby grands, these little small ones without the locks, you know those are the Chinese models. Stay away. That's all I can say. Don't get me into it. Don't get me started. All right. So. Here you got the, the large prop stick goes in the bottom cup and the small one. And even there's an extra small one, this little guy over here, okay? It goes in this prop, this prop cup. It goes like this, like that, okay? But for today, we're gonna leave it all open here, okay? And then we're gonna put up the music stand, like this. Remember you have a little support in the back here and it has several levels okay we'll put it like this okay and this is called the keyboard cover or better known as the fall board okay this is the fall board i'm going to pick this up here okay so now the piano is ready to to play but we're going to use the piano this system so the first thing that we want to do as far as it being since it's a piano disc system we're going to show you how to turn it on, turn it off. So the camera can come around this way, underneath. Can you get a picture of this? This is the power strip, okay? This has an on off button and you're gonna switch it on. We'll switch it off here, okay? How you know that it's on is the CPU, which is this. This is the Piano Disc Prodigy CPU. When you see these lights on, you know that it's working. There's also a test button. If you press this test button here and wait a little bit, you're gonna see that it's gonna cycle through all the keys and that lets you know that the piano is working. It plays every single note. Now, I just said it plays every single note except for the first three or four because they occupy a space that's over the leg here. And since you never play these notes that are over here, uh, instead of cutting a hole in the leg and making this longer, we just omit the solenoids that are over here and the same thing in the bass end. So once you press the test button, you'll notice it doesn't place the first four or five keys and it doesn't play the last four or five keys, okay? Uh, this part here, this is the, the solenoid that moves the, the um, the dampers up and down, okay? One way you could te test it, you could knock on the soundboard. You hear it's like knocking on a door, except when you push this down, you hear the difference? It's like a haunted house in here, okay? This is your speaker, okay? This plays the background music. It's automatically uh, set by me before it leaves here. I put the, the lows a little, little higher than midway, and uh, the, the line is usually just about always up to the highest setting. This is line one. That's what the Prodigy is connected to. This is give, gives you your background music. If you notice over here, this big metal plate, this is where all the solenoids are that play the piano, okay? So they're incorporated inside here. You never have to see them or touch them or have anything to do with them, unless, of course, they stop working. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to get the piano playing using the iPad, okay? So generally what happens is that when you get a piano from us, I always say, send us your iPad and we'll load the music into it. It's very important that before you send us your iPad, you download the Piano Disc IQ app. It's this icon right here. See that Piano Disc IQ? You have to download that app in your iPad before you send it to me. The reason why is, is that if you send me an iPad and you don't download it, that means I have to download it. What do I need to download it? Your Apple ID and Apple password. I don't want that, okay? So don't send me an iPad without this little icon. 
icon in there. You can also put in the piano disc. This is this uh, app over here is basically for calibration and it's used by technicians in order to set up the piano. You might as well put that in there too. So remember this one and this one. You see Anne already has it in her piano. She doesn't have to worry, okay? So once we establish that, now we're gonna go into your settings, okay? First thing we look for is Bluetooth. Remember, this piano plays on Bluetooth and not Wi-Fi, okay? So we're gonna hit Bluetooth. And what we're looking for is piano, disc, silent drive, Bluetooth audio. This is already connected, okay? The reason why is that I've had the iPad here and I was able to test it with Ann's iPad here and it's already connected. Um, it's what you'll have to do, when you, if, if I don't do this for you, then you'll just have to do it. It's very simple. You just look for this piano, this silent drive audio and just connect it. So you, this is all connected. So now we go to the next thing. So now we're gonna play some music, okay? I'm gonna go into, okay. So over here we're in our album. This is a little iPod icon. That's where all your music is, okay? So when you get the iPad, uh, it automatically is gonna show you a very small selection music that the that piano disc gives you, but we, we load in a lot more music and they're in this menu right here where you see the little iPod icon. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the music that um, is piano only. You have three types of music in this iPad. You're gonna have piano only, you're gonna have piano with background music, and then you're gonna have videos, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call up something simple. Let me see here, one that I like to use all the time. That's not it. Is it this one here? Is it this one? Nope. Here it is, okay, I like to listen to Claire de Lune. Everybody knows Claire de Lune. I always like to select something that everybody's familiar with so you get an idea of the way it's supposed to sound. See the play button? This is your play button. Now if you want to adjust the volume, very simple. See the little speaker icon? There you go, okay? This is your volume control. Now when you adjust the volume, let's say we want to make it softer, you move it down a little bit and listen to it. Now remember, at some point when you bring the volume down, you're not gonna hear the notes play because there is not enough energy to make the hammers hit the strings. So that's going to be your lowest volume level. So let's get back in here. All right, so that shows you how to play. By the way, let me just go back in here and just let you know, uh, how do you know if it's piano only? Most of the piano only music has these generic artwork over here like you see, is mostly just, just piano only. A lot of this stuff, you're gonna have to go through and listen to and see what you like and what you don't like, save them to a playlist, because there's a lot of music on here and some of this music was recorded and saved 20, 25 years ago with different equipment, different electronics, so it's not gonna be the same quality as the newer stuff. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to play some music with uh, some backgrounds. So we could choose, for instance, you had over here Rod Stewart. So if I click on Rod Stewart here, Everybody knows it had to be you. There we go. Okay, so right away I hear that the volume of the vo Rod Stewart is a little too loud, so I'm gonna adjust it. Now if I wanna add a little bit more vocals for Rod Stewart in there, I'm gonna raise up. I'm gonna go more towards the speaker. And now I'm gonna raise this up. Honestly speaking, this is pretty much the most difficult thing to get used to is how to work the volumes, especially the balances. You just have to remember that in this little menu here when you press the speaker, this top line here is the general volume level of 
of your uh, speaker, the way it's going to be, and piano, okay? When you, uh, and that's the level. Over here is the balance. So if you want more vocals, you're gonna move this dot a little closer to the speaker. If you want more piano, then you're gonna move it a little bit away. And every time you make an adjustment, you do it a little bit and then wait to listen to it. You don't go here like that because that's, that's, not gonna, that's not like the volume control in your car or something. You just have to do it a little bit and then wait for the piano to catch up because this is, remember that there's a lot of moving parts in this thing. It's basically a machine. And uh, every time that you make an adjustment, it's going to uh, take a split second to, to give you your uh, result, basically, okay? Now, the next type of software that we have in here are videos, okay? Let's, let's find one that we kind of like here. Let's see. Oh, I like this one. Let's play. Would love to keep having that play, but YouTube, they hear something that's copyrighted and they get all freaked out and they take down your video and they do all kinds of things. So uh, unfortunately, in order for you to hear the rest of this, you have to buy a piano from us and have us send you it with a system like this. Anyway, I think that really covers everything that I wanted to cover for this video. So all I'm gonna say is congratulations, and I'm so happy that you're finally getting heavy your team on three. And this piano is actually gonna be packed up tomorrow, and it's leaving with those here. You see over here, we got two Yamaha C7s that are leaving out of here. And uh, one's going to Mariposa, California, and the other one is going to Pennsylvania. And this G1's going to Dallas. And then we have another C7 that's going to be going to San Antonio. So we've been really busy here at Piano Outlet. And if you notice, we have full inventory. If you're interested in any type of piano, a baby grand, a grand piano, this C1 is available right now. And again, if you want the very best in a small baby grand, the best in the world that's made today, that's the piano right there. And incidentally, this piano is about $45,000 brand new. And uh, Call me if you like the price. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.